Okay, so this is what we have to work with. We have a lot of built up CA glue. All right guys, so after last video, I decided to shield this thing the rest of the way. Got some progress done on cleaning it up. Look at how nice and shiny that is. Uh, the frets look awesome, super polished up. The fret ends feel really nice now. I took some uh, boiled linseed oil to the board and the heat gun to the headstock to get rid of most of that bubbling. It's mostly gone now. I'm guessing once I put tuners back on, it'll come back though. But my goal is to finish cleaning and polishing and um, clean up all the, the rest of the parts. I ended up using naphtha. The guitar was a lot dirtier than I thought. Wiped the whole thing down with naphtha. And then I used uh, Music Nomad, this polish. And then we'll go for some, uh, where is it? Well, I have another thing of this. It's the, the one, here it is, this stuff, the one. And then we'll follow that up with some wax and that'll be good enough. It's already looking pretty uh, pretty mint, but I'm gonna do another round of the polish. It's just got a very light abrasive in it. It's uh, really good stuff. I love this stuff. So overall, I'm really happy with how everything cleaned up. It looks really good. Um, I'm glad I ordered new saddles, because to it, see how this flops around? Two of them are completely frozen, and uh, the blocks are stuck in a bunch of them, and the bottom's missing. So I'm just gonna throw new saddles on. These, they're gonna look pretty original. These are still look like they're in pretty good shape. There's some paint peeling and whatnot, but uh, I could always relic them a little bit if I really need to. Uh, another issue I found is the intonation screws are just super, super corroded and they're not coming back. And actually, one of the issues with this, uh, the only real issue with this bridge is the main plate on these old ones is softer cast. They fixed that in new ones, but the old ones is soft cast metal. And then they have super hard inserts, which these, uh, the blades are still perfect after all this time, but you can actually replace those if you need to. But if you get longer screws, this is a really thick plate, so if you get longer screws, you're much less likely to strip them out. So I'm gonna just do that and just order some new ones. I've got some 1000 series uh, intonation screws floating around. I need to throw these in the drill and clean them out all the way and uh, round over my nut. This isn't like sharp, like it's gonna cut you, but it's uncomfortable and it bothers me. And then let's start throwing the, uh, let's start throwing stuff back on, put this thing back together, man. I'm in no way affiliated with Stu Mac. I wish I was. I wish they'd send me free tools. This little kit is amazing. I use this literally every day. It comes with this little fitting that perfectly fits over the adjustable poles on a humbucker. And if you've ever taken all of these out by hand, you know it sucks. Watch this and no risk of uh, slipping unless you're really stupid. And you can get them down all the way like that and then just do the rest by hand. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. It's a little hairy doing this with just a regular flathead. So as I'm putting uh, screws back, I'm being careful to put the rusty, nasty looking ones back where they were. 
Let's see how these are super, still kind of rusty looking, kind of nasty. Don't worry, I'm, I'm gonna coat those in oil and uh, polish so they won't rust anymore. But I put them back where they were so that it looks natural. If you really wanted to do a good job at this, you would uh, keep track of exactly where each one goes. I'm gonna tape this thing off and hit this on the, the pickups on the buffing wheel real quick. Just real light, just, just kiss it, just to get a little bit of shine back. It's just gonna be much faster than hand buff buffing them and I only have so much time. All right, I got the headstock all waxed up, got the locking nut back on. Look at how these pickups turned out, man. They're still aged, because they're old, but uh, they look way better. Here's the neck. And I went ahead and uh, waxed up the top so I could put the plate back on. If you try to wax with this plate on, it's just gonna get stuck under the corners down here, and it's a total pain, so I, I like to wax first. That turns out pretty good, man. This thing's looking really nice. All right, moment of truth. I hope this camera doesn't fall. This is uh, kind of a sketchy shot. We're gonna see if this uh, bubbling comes back. You know, these really don't need to be very tight. It's just a uh, little snug. And if you check them every time you change your strings, you can keep them in pretty good shape. Assuming that you change your strings very often. Man, I get some people coming into my shop, they're like, oh, I haven't changed my strings since I was a teenager. It's like, well, how old are you, 37? It's like, yeah, it's probably uh, a little past you there, man. I need to get a adjustable light in here for situations like this. Kind of just using the uh, shop lights. It works for doing work. Yeah, I was kind of amazed how heavy these tuners are. This guitar is a little over eight and a half pounds. So it's not super heavy, but it's not super light either. My, uh, my RR24 is a little over seven. And for standing up, at least for me, it's like the perfect weight. This one's a little heavy for standing up for me. I got a bad shoulder and it definitely aggravates that. I definitely uh, couldn't play this one live, but I would want to. It's too unique and special. Really, the R24 is too. That one's just got a vibe to it, man. That thing is exceptional. So I'm just gonna check my work and make sure these are uh, as snug as I want them. Perfect. I would say that's a, uh, that's a success, man. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that looks way better, doesn't it? Still not perfect, but much, much, much better. Wow, just a little bit of heat, man, is all it took. Cool. Wow, dude, plastic is awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's get started on the finished repair on the neck. All right, so this is what we have to work with. We have a lot of built up CA glue. I decided not to uh, color match this area right here. Because uh, that's just part of the guitar story, and it's actually not wood, it's uh, binding. The binding goes down a lot farther than the paint. So, And it's on the downside, so it's not really going to bug me. It's, it's part of the guitar. Part of its history. So I think I'm going to start with lightly scraping this big glob off. 
with uh, a razor blade and then I'm going to start with some 1000 grit and get kind of close to where I want and then move on up to 2000 and then hit it with some micro mesh and then get it on the buffing wheel and buff it all out and make it uh, feel great again. Make next great again. So I got that uh, finish work done. I got this thing all polished up. One thing that's really important for finish and woodworking type of work, look at how good this plate turned out. Remember how nasty it looked before? Look at that. Pickups look great. Anyway, one thing that's really important for woodworking and finishing work is to just slow down and be patient, man, and never take off too much. The key is to take off and remove and do just enough work to do what you're trying to do. This dark spot and the uh, the kind of like, there are two dark spots and the kind of glazing stuff, it's gotten better. I mean, it kind of depends on what light you look at it in. I think a lot of people would never even notice that. Look at this fretboard, man. Look at that. Look how shiny those frets are. This looks so good. And the headstock turned out really good. Those bubbles are, maybe they are coming back a little bit. I'm just gonna have to live with that. Let's uh, flip it over, take a look at the back. So I've been here about four or five hours today. Did about the same amount of time yesterday. I've got eight to 10 hours into just cleaning and polishing every part of this and the little finish repair. I had to buff out the neck quite a bit, so that's a little shinier than it was. There's the back of the headstock. Yeah, I wasn't trying to make this perfect, and it's not, but uh, it certainly feels a lot better. It was really rough on the, on the palm of my hand when I was playing. I could feel how rough it was, and now it's just totally smooth. It feels feels great. So yeah, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty psyched with the way this is going, man. I wish I had the parts for the bridge today, but God, look at how shiny that thing is. We got a couple little, couple little dings and scratches, but man, for an '89, this thing's in great shape. Look at this freaking guitar, dude. I'm so psyched on this thing, man. I'm so happy that I got this, and it sounds so good too. Look at these pickups. I was able to simultaneously maintain the patina and uh, clean it up at the same time. I'm really happy with the results of this. I gotta put some oil in there. There's still some active rust. 